Landale back to Mills. For the they also like the Mills on the triple. Look at Mills. Mills for three. This is a story of a young Gugura Nagia Garland Dawara Maryam man who grew up with a dream. He held a dream for his peoples, his country and the legacy of Australian basketball. We have just watched him realise Australia's Olympic basketball dream. So let's take a deep dive into his early life, professional basketball career and off-court accomplishments so far. This is the story of the great Paddy Mills. Raised in the country's capital, Canberra, as a proud Indigenous Australian, Paddy Mills grew up with the game of basketball from the age of four, playing at a local Indigenous club called The Shadows. His uncle, Danny Morsu, was an Australian boomer and was highly influential in Paddy's career trajectory. From this young age, Mills was steadfast on becoming an excellent athlete. With goals plastered on his wall like becoming an Australian emu, playing D1 college, featuring in the Olympics and making the NBA, Mills was already highly ambitious as a kid. I wrote that uh, a number of years ago now, um, but I, I have stuck to it. Um, I can say that I've ticked two, two of them off already. He became part of the Canberra Cannons NBL side as a ball boy. It was here where he met the assistant coach of the St Mary Gales, David Patrick, who was playing at the Canberra Cannons at the time. They would build a strong relationship, which was a big reason to why Paddy would head over to St Mary's in the future. At this stage though, Paddy had joined the likes of Andrew Bogut and Luke Longley by joining the Australian Institute of Sport, the premier national high performance centre, becoming the hottest name in Australian basketball. Paddy had excellent agility and toughness from a young age, which made him a multi-sport talent. In addition to basketball, Paddy was playing underage in Australian rules football and was excelling. He was offered at 17 a contract with the Sydney Swans to play in the AFL, which he declined and was an under-15 All-Australian talent, but chose to pursue his basketball aspirations. He would later say that he had a genuine love for AFL and would have been just as happy as a footballer. With Mills entirely focused on his basketball career, the accolades started to rack up. Winning the best national under-20 player, the 2006 Junior Male Player of the Year from Basketball Australia, and appearing for Australia in the World Select Team at the Nike Hoop Summit, where he faced off against Kevin Durant Wayne Ellington, Ty Lawson and Thaddeus Young. Mills detailed that this was a huge learning experience which gave him an understanding of his ability against the world's best. Mills was also honoured by the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island community, winning the most promising new sports talent at the 2006 Deadly Awards and the Australian Basketball and National Sportsman of the Year by the NAIDOC. Through all these accolades and projected stardom, life for Paddy wasn't necessarily smooth Growing up, he was racially vilified frequently, and he explained that he was called every name under the sun, with it being a constant battle for himself. He learned to just walk away from it no matter how brutal, and use his experiences to find a way to live a life with impact and purpose. These harrowing experiences growing up gave him the motivation to make his life mission to give back to the Indigenous Australian community that gave him so much, with some of his humanitarianism documented later in this piece. It would be announced in November 2006 that Paddy had signed to play college basketball at St Mary's College. Now Mills' impact in college was instant. Averaging 14.8 points, 2.1 rebounds, 3.5 assists and 1.8 steals in his freshman year, to put these numbers into perspective, he held the record for most points in a season and single game by a freshman in St Mary's history. He would be named the West Coast Conference Newcomer of the Year and earned all West Coast Conference first team honours after helping St. Mary's to their first top 25 ranking since 1989. Mills's breakout game would have to be his performance against Oregon, where he'd break the school's freshman points record with 37 points. Mills had impressed in his freshman season so much, he was caught up to the Australian Olympic team, having already featured for the Boomers at the FIBA Oceania Championships in 2007. Mills being caught up to the 2008 Beijing Olympic squad, 
was his chance to showcase himself on the big stage. He grabbed that opportunity with both hands, leading the team with 14.2 points per game, with Australia finishing in 7th place. Mills was Australia's best player and he was doing all this while still in college. He would be named the 2008 Gays medalist, given to Australia's best basketball player. He returned to St Mary's with a further evolved game. He improved on both sides of the floor, increasing his averages in points to 18.4, assists to 3.9 and rebounds to 2.4. It was another monumental year that subsequently got him in the All West Coast Conference first team for the second consecutive year. It would be a bit of a surprise when Paddy chose to forego his four years in college and enroll in the NBA draft as a sophomore. Mills' tenure with the Gales was outstanding, with St. Mary showing their gratitude by retiring Paddy Mills' number. Looking back at some 2009 mock drafts for Paddy Mills, he was expected to go in the early second round, with his biggest attributes being his speed and shooting ability. There were questions though on his size, with Mills standing at 6 feet tall and his lack of strength defensively. Mills went through the chaotic draft process, working out for various teams and was happy with how he trained. He travelled to New York for the NBA draft with his family, waiting for his name to be called. Unfortunately for Paddy, there was a lot of waiting. With the first pick in the 2009 NBA draft, with the 19th pick in the 2009 NBA draft, with the 35th pick in the 2009 NBA draft, with the 41st pick in the 2009 NBA draft. It was not until the Portland Trail Blazers chose him with the 55th pick. The fifth pick in the 2009 NBA Draft, the Portland Trailblazers select Patrick Mills from Canberra, Australia, in St. Mary's College of California. In this draft, uh, but I, I think this young man can play in the NBA. Meaning that he got to realize a lifelong dream. Paddy Mills would become the second ever Indigenous Australian to be drafted after the great Nate Jawai. Without foreshadowing too much, it's more than fair to say that Mills retrospectively has been a top 15 player from that 2009 draft. As most NBA players know, making the big time does not guarantee anything, as Mills would find out in his first two seasons with the Portland Trail Blazers. Before preseason, Mills injured his fifth metatarsal in his right foot and was ruled out for the NBA Summer League. He was assigned to the Portland Trailblazers D-League team, essentially a reserve grade, to acclimatise to the team's play style. Paddy was an absolute menace in the D-League, scoring 38 points in his debut and averaging 25 points and 5 assists during his 5-game stint in the D-League. He essentially earned an instant call-up to the main squad, and it's safe to say Paddy was above the D-League level. Paddy Mills was sporadic in his first season though in the NBA, averaging 2.6 points per game and 3.8 minutes of action. His career high of 23 in his second season with the Blazers was probably his biggest highlight. Now as many Aussies know, Paddy is a household name for the San Antonio Spurs. But the transition from the Trail Blazers to the Spurs wasn't exactly smooth. With the NBA in 2011 in a lockout period, which in short was the issue of how much money was being dispersed to the players, the NBA would not start till the 25th of December. This meant the preseason and 16 games of the regular season were cancelled, meaning that Paddy would have to keep fit during this period and play overseas. Mills came back to Australia playing for the Melbourne Tigers for 9 games after the allure of China was too much, with Mills joining the Xinjiang Flying Tigers. He dominated play in both leagues before the San Antonio Spurs swooped in for his services for a contract for the remainder of the 2011-2012 season. Mills would be a perfect fit for the Spurs as he had an outstanding 34 point and 12 assist game only a month after signing. This would set a new record for most points scored in a game by an Australian, with it previously being held by Andrew Bogut. This game was also his first career double-double. Mills would re-sign with the Spurs it would be part of a special NBA Finals run in the 2012-13 season. The Spurs, led by Tim Duncan, Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili, won 58 regular season games and powered through the Western Conference. They would push the Miami Heat to seven games in the NBA Finals, but lose, with Mills only able to feature in the first three after suffering a foot injury. Paddy felt he could have done more to contribute to the Spurs, and to this point he was primarily riding the bench. He made the sacrifice after losing the NBA Finals to focus on nutrition and remove the Fatty Paddy label that coach Greg Popovich had jokingly given to him. 
Mills would alter his body significantly that off-season, coming back as a much stronger player, and the on-court results were showing. Paddy would win the backup point guard role behind Tony Parker, playing in 81 games of the 82-game season, and scoring double-digit points for the first time over the entirety of the season. His shooting percentages improved, even when Mills was taking double the shots. It was clear Mills was having a breakout year, with his name now circled on the opposition scouting reports. He was playing a career-high 19 minutes per game, and was crucial in the San Antonio Spurs coming first in the Western Conference. The Spurs fairly comfortably strolled through the Western Conference outside of the seven-game series against the Mavericks in Round 1. Mills had been playing well throughout the playoffs, filling in for All-Star Tony Parker, providing an offensive spark from the three-point line all series long. It was not until Paddy was on the biggest stage in basketball, the NBA Finals, where we saw him really shine. In Game 4 of the NBA Finals, with the Spurs 2-1 up in the best of seven series, Mills would ignite. Mills coming off the bench would add an outstanding 14 points, which included some excellent three-point marksmanship and some great playmaking as he consistently found the open man. The Spurs comfortably walked out winners, which set up a Game 5 at home in San Antonio, where they could become NBA champions. The Spurs would once again call upon their attacking spark plug in Mills, who would yet again deliver. Coming into the game with the team down by seven, Mills provided some instant offense. Bonner on the drive, back up top, Mills for three. Gets the bounce. Patty would then show some speed off the dribble to blow by LeBron James, forcing the Heat to take a timeout. Mills drive, Patty Mills on the reverse. It's a 14 point lead and the Heat need a timeout. Was a signature play. Mills would then drop one bomb. Mills for three. Go to the basket. And then an absolute dagger. Here in this third quarter. Mills. Bang! As the crowd roared. He wasn't done yet adding another three with Jeff Van Gundy explaining. This man can shoot. He had 14 points in nine minutes and then added his final three to end the third quarter, finishing with 17 points an outstanding performance. The San Antonio Spurs would go on to win the game and win the NBA championship. At just 25, Paddy Mills was an NBA champion, a guy who had contributed to a team that reached the pinnacle of basketball, and a man that now stood with his Torres Strait Islander flag on the podium as an inspiration to the next generation of Indigenous Australian athletes. In the following months, Paddy would bring the Larry O'Brien trophy down under with fellow Australian teammate Aaron Baines with the nation greeting them as heroes. So in the off-season of 2014, Mills would get his first proper NBA payday signing a three-year $12 million deal with the Spurs. This gave him most importantly security as it was clear San Antonio saw Mills as a key piece to their future. Over the next seven seasons, Mills remained statistically solid as he continued his role as a spark plug off the Spurs bench. The big four of Ginobili, Parker, Leonard and Duncan slowly dissolved over the years after that championship with Paddy remaining a mainstay. Mills during this time would become the record holder for most NBA games ever played by an Australian, the most NBA threes made for one team as a reserve, the first ever Australian to reach 1,000 made three-pointers and the longest tenured San Antonio Spurs player. Paddy gave the city of San Antonio some wonderful highlights with numerous spectacular game winners and clutch plays. I think a particularly special one was his game winner on Manu Ginobili night, as the legendary trio of Parker, Duncan and Manu watched on as Mills' shot almost commemorated the players that gave him so much. Now before we get into Australia's Olympic heroics, let's talk about how Paddy has held his Indigenous Australian heritage close to him throughout his career. He has continued to return to his homeland throughout his career with significant generosity. In 2011, Mills donated $40,000 for flood relief, and in 2012, Mills became an ambassador for a cottage by the sea, raising significant funds for charity. Mills launched the Indigenous Basketball Australia program that promotes an environment free of discrimination for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. He installed hydro panels for remote Indigenous communities, but probably Paddy's biggest contribution 
was the $1.5 million he donated to social justice causes like the Black Lives Matter movement. This was the entirety of his NBA bubble salary, showcasing Paddy's generosity. And the thing is, these acts don't even scratch the surface of Paddy's off-court efforts. With the 2008 Olympics relevant to Paddy's early career, I thought we would start in 2012 at the London Olympic Games. Mills would cap off an excellent 2012 season with the Spurs, where he hit a memorable game winner against Russia. Australia struggled at the 2012 Olympics, only just scraping into the knockout rounds to lose to the USA in the quarterfinals. He would end the 2012 Olympics averaging a nation high 21.2 points, more than the likes of KD and other superstars. At this point, the Boomers team was just not talented enough to compete at a high level at the Olympics. This would be the case at the FIBA 2014 World Cup with Australia finishing 12th as well. It was not until the 2016 Rio Olympics where we saw some positive signs. Mills scored over 40 points five times before Australia would play in the bronze medal match against Spain. Like Paddy had done his entire career, he stood up for his country and provided 30 points, but it just wasn't enough as Spain got a fortuitous call in the final moments to give them the one point win, relegating Australia to fourth place. This was the fourth time in Australia's history that the team would fall in the bronze medal match which was demoralizing to the players. The Boomers would have one moment of glory though, as they would defeat the USA for the first time in Australia's history. Paddy yet again came through for his nation scoring 30 points, as Australia beat the USA in front of a sold out Eddie Had Stadium, a monumental day for Australian basketball. As we know, Australia in tournament action just couldn't get over the hump. So leading up to the 2020 Tokyo Games, there was a lot of anticipation as we came out with our best national team in recent years. More importantly, Paddy Mills became the first ever Indigenous Australian flag bearer, something that he was incredibly proud to do. He had some excellent pre-Olympic performances leading Australia to win over Argentina with his scrumptious game winner. He also had a solid performance against the USA, which gave our second ever win against the nation. Australia went perfect in the group stage, defeating Italy, Germany and Nigeria. Mills had 25 points in two of those games, with an influential display as he wheeled Australia on the offensive end. Mills in the quarterfinal yet again led all Australian scorers with both Joe Ingalls, Jock Landale and Matisse Thibel providing excellent play. Australia would have to settle though for another bronze medal match after losing to the USA and even though they were ranked outsiders, this side was up by 15 points at one stage. They would have to regather themselves and that belief for their bronze medal game against Slovenia. The entire nation sat and prayed that this would not be a repeat of the fourth place finishes of years past. The threat of NBA superstar Luka Doncic did not phase our boomers as the Australians controlled the match. It was clear that Mills was going to stop at nothing to get this win and this medal, as Paddy had 26 points by half time. He scored from absolutely everywhere on the court, sinking tough mid ranges, contested threes, and difficult paint finishes. As Slovenia tried to fight their way back into the game, Mills continued to have an answer, as an entire nation willed their boomers on. The game would become tense at certain points, but big contributions by Dante Exum. Joe Ingalls, Matisse Stiebel, Jock Landale, Nick Kay and Chris Goulding kept Slovenia away. Mills would end the game with a whopping 42 points, an Olympic record for most points scored in the middle match. Australia won and this team became national heroes. And after 65 years of blood, sweat and plenty of tears, the Australian men's basketball team's crusade to stand on the Olympic podium has finally delivered. The Boomers! have claimed the bronze medal as they defeat Slovenia here by 14 points. Andrew Gaze was reduced to tears as he knew how important this moment was for Australian basketball. They have their DNA on this. Yep. You know, there's so many that you look back on that toiled when you don't get a cent for playing the game. <laughs> when you're building stadiums, <laughs> you're building a sport, you're trying to generate it and uh, for me, 
Mills was honoured on the front page of the Sydney Morning Herald with the words, Mills carried the flag, then his nation, and leads boomers to bronze. Paddy Mills will go down in Australian history as not only a basketball superstar, but a man that represented his country to the highest degree off the court. He is a man that every Australian should be proud of. So that is all for this mini documentary. I know this isn't the normal footy content normally found on this channel, but I just felt incredibly inspired by their recent bronze medal, and I hope I did this great man justice. A lot of hours went into this video, so I'd be grateful if you could press the like button and subscribe if you want more of these mini documentaries. As always, thank you for watching.